Welcome to this final video in my series about live groups. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different workflow examples. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can use live groups in your pipeline, and it will really depend a lot on the type of project that you're working on. But these are some of the most common uses for live groups in production. So in this example, we have a multi-shot scene set up with lighting on the sequence, camera angle and shot levels. And these Gaffer 3 nodes are all inheriting lights from upstream. Using live groups, we're able to version these separately from each other and from the rest of the project. This is really useful as iterations are made and it makes it very easy to revert back to a previous version if needed. As well as this, it allows multiple lighting artists to work together to light the scene. So one artist, possibly a lead, can focus on the sequence lighting in their own katana script and then lock it when they finish making changes. Then other artists could import the sequence lighting live group and make changes on a per camera angle or per shot basis, all while inheriting from the sequence lighting upstream. If the lead artist decides to change the sequence lighting, they can continue making changes and publish the live group again. So to demonstrate this, I'll switch to a scene where we can imagine that the lead is working on the sequence lighting. So this is the live group that's being referenced in the previous Katana project. And I'll just make a couple of changes to these lights in the back. Bring the intensity and exposure up just to make it really clear that there's been a change. And now I'll publish this live group and override the latest version. Then I'll jump back to the other Katana project and reload the sequence lighting live group. And as you can see, this updates the lights. However, if an artist has adopted these lights for editing and made changes to a parameter, as they have in this Gaffer 3, then that parameter will not inherit the changes made upstream. You can turn off the overrides by clicking the yellow button on the left of each parameter, which indicates a local change. So you can toggle this to disable and enable the local changes. So when it's disabled, the parameters will go back to inheriting upstream from the sequence lighting, as you can see here. And this is a nice and easy way to revert back to the sequence level changes without losing your overrides. So this is a really streamlined way to light a scene with multiple artists working in parallel. Here's another example showing how a live group can be referenced multiple times in the same scene or across multiple different projects. The live group contains the setup for the AOVs, which I can now import into as many other Katana projects as needed, avoiding the need to repeat this setup. And if I make any changes, I only need to make them once and reload the live groups. These live groups can be managed by one person, which can help streamline your pipeline and help you to work more efficiently inside Katana. This particular setup is really useful as often the same AOVs are required for an entire project. So as you can see, there's lots of different applications for using live groups and they can be very simply integrated into your pipeline. I hope this video and series has been helpful for you. You can find out more information on live groups at learn.foundry.com forward slash katana, as well as a range of other katana tutorials.